What's good everybody on YouTube? This is your boy Akil McLeod and I'm a full-time eBay and Poshmark seller and in today's video I want to cover 10 of the most common like reseller abbreviations and acronyms that you most commonly see or hear about on reseller channels. Now if you guys are interested in these kind of videos go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos and without further ado let's get right into it so now one of the most common reseller abbreviations you're gonna hear about is RA and that stands for retail arbitrage now that basically means you you're going into any other uh, typical retail store like a Walmart maybe a Ross a Burlington any any type of store like that you're basically buying those items usually on clearance and you're just selling them online now personally I don't do a ton of that probably 5% of my inventory comes from retail arbitrage because the closest Walmart to me is like 35 minutes away and the closest target is just about the same and I do have a Ross I actually have two Rosses in my area but Ross the ones over there just isn't that good for me so I hardly ever pick up things but I do try to go as much as I as much as I can just to you know you never know you might find a deal or find something on clearance so that is something to be on the lookout for especially if your area doesn't have good thrift stores so um, definitely be on the lookout for those type of opportunities like places like Burlington Marshalls Ross and uh, DD's discount there's a lot of stores out there that you can get some really good deals but like I said I just don't do a ton of them. next up is OA now OA is online arbitrage and it's the same exact thing as retail arbitrage the only difference is you're buying those things online and basically you can go on to any website and purchase things that you know that's either on clearance or just a really good deal and then flip it on eBay or Poshmark or wherever you like to sell different items and usually some of the stores that people do online arbitrage is places like a walmart.com adidas.com nike.com and they will probably go to the sales section and attach us another coupon that they might find online and get a really really good deal especially when it comes to like black friday and cyber monday deals that's usually when a lot of people do a ton of online arbitrage so like i said that's just another option to look into if your thrift stores in your area just aren't that good another common reseller acronym that you're gonna see is euc now i first started seeing euc on ebay but now i'm starting to also see it more often on poshmark and that really just stands for excellent use condition now for me I like to purchase items from thrift stores that's usually in excellent condition and that means there's no stains, there's no tears, those there basically no flaws whatsoever. It's it's practically like a brand new item and that's what that's the type of items I usually like to go for. But honestly nowadays if I do see something with a little stain, I probably will pick it up and then try to clean it once I get home. But for the most part, the majority of my inventory is usually sold in excellent used condition. Now, the tricky thing about excellent use condition is that a lot of people, sometimes they might say it's excellent use condition, but there's one minor flaw. In that case, it's really not excellent use condition, and that's when sometimes you could use this other acronym, and that's GUC. That's usually good use condition or great use condition. Now, for me, it, it really depends. That's where it gets tends to be a little gray area when you say good and great and all these type of things, because... You know, it's, it's not really like a number scale. It's really just based on opinion for the most part. So for some people, they might say it's good use condition, but it has like a normal, like a normal sign of wear. Like maybe it, maybe it has some fraying or, you know, some, some type of lint or maybe just some fuzziness or some pilling. Like to me, that's normal signs of wear. If it's a stain, if it's a tear, you know, that's, that's say what it is it's basically a stain or a tear so i don't usually say uh, guc and i don't guc and i don't usually see that as often but it definitely is pretty common on uh, ebay and on poshmark as well so definitely be on the lookout for guc if i had to give any real advice i would probably say not to use guc in your titles but you know because i just don't i think it's kind of fuzzy when you put that but euc is definitely way more common and you can definitely use that as a keyword, especially on eBay. Next common reseller abbreviation is VTG. Now that basically just stands for vintage and vintage is definitely anything that's to at least 20 years old. Now for eBay and for Poshmark, it, it gets kind of tricky as well because if it's 10 years old, sometimes if it's 15 years old, it might even be eight years old. Somebody's gonna use VTG as a keyword. 
So definitely be cognizant of that as well. But at the same time, uh, when it really comes down to something being vintage, especially when it comes to clothing, that usually stands for at least 20 years or more. So um, definitely be on the lookout for any VTG you might see that, especially when it comes to clothing. And just using that keyword might actually help uh, give me a little boost in the search ranking. Next up is GW. Now, this might seem obvious, but GW is just goodwill. Um, I definitely see that a lot. I hear a lot of resellers on YouTube say GW as well. So just wanted to throw that in there. Um, it's usually not, you won't usually see that on eBay or on Poshmark or anything like that. But you definitely will hear somebody say, I went down to GW and I picked up some stuff. So just in case you're brand new to reselling, GW really just means goodwill. Now the next most common reseller abbreviation that I got for you guys is NWT. And that simply stands for new with tags. And I always put NWT, especially if I find something in the thrift and it actually still has the original price tag on there. I would always put NWT. Sometimes I might put NWT in the keywords and I might also put that in my uh, description. And I'll just actually spell it out and say new with tags in my item description. So definitely be aware of those anytime you're, you're thrifting because brand new items usually does sell a little better and for a higher price point than used items. Another one I got for you guys is NIB and that is new in box and new in box is usually pertains to sneakers. Um, I know a lot of people do a lot of retail arbitrage in places like Ross and Burlington and Marshalls and sometimes you might not get the original box but if you can get the original box from like a Nike outlet or something like that and you do have the original box and it's not broken or damaged you can definitely use NIB as a keyword in your eBay listing. Some people, they like to collect shoes and having the original box that it came with is definitely a plus and you could sometimes get maybe 10 to 20% more if it does come brand new with the box. So NIB is new in box and uh, definitely just use that, especially if you're selling things on eBay. Another common reseller abbreviation is NWOB and that is new without box. And like I said, you can definitely get a whole bunch of new without box things sometimes in your thrift store, but most commonly in places like Burlington, Marshalls, uh, DD's Discount, places like that where they get rid of the box just to save space. And NWOB is, I don't really see that as often as I used to, but it's definitely still common on places like eBay. So just be aware of NWOB. I don't usually use it often because most people really don't search for stuff like that but that is something you might come across next up is fba and fba is fulfilled by amazon and that's basically when you uh pack up a bunch of different items and you ship it out to an amazon warehouse and basically amazon handles the customer service the shipping and handling and all of those type of things so you definitely might be hearing uh resellers say amazon fba and that's fulfilled by amazon and um, I'm actually going to be using the FBA program very soon. I'm actually in the process of like gathering a bunch of stuff that I purchased from thrift stores to just ship out to Amazon. And it's probably going to be a really big package. It's probably going to be over a hundred things. <clears throat> it's probably going to be over a hundred items, but I definitely just want to, you know, start off with a bang and ship out a bunch of stuff. So I'm, I'm in the process of getting that, uh, that complete package together and probably by the end of the month I'll be shipping out my first Amazon FBA package. Now last but certainly not least, this is one of my favorite acronyms that I use all the time especially when I get a low ball offer and that is GTFOH and that stands for get the out of here and that's anytime I get a low ball offer because like I said I'm terrible at negotiating and I always it, it, it still gets under my skin when I get a low ball offer so that's usually something that I say and I would either just counter or sometimes I might just go ahead and decline. So that's all I got for today's video so if you guys enjoyed that one don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos and if there's any common reseller abbreviations or acronyms that I may have forgotten drop it in the comment section so we can keep the conversation going and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!